dating is, is trying to find compatibilities. And if you're not compatible, there is no, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that person. It also doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. You don't need to change yourself to try to make yourself more compatible with that person. And that person doesn't need to try to change themselves to make yourself more compatible with you. You should just say, we don't have enough compatibilities and that's okay. And I wish you all the best, but this is not gonna be going the direction that we need to do. But like I spent so much time and energy in relationships. I was kind of a serial monogamist. I would go from like, a two-year relationship to a three-year relationship to a year and a half relationship and my mom would say to me Danielle if you're always in a relationship with the wrong person when are you ever free to meet the right person and at the time I couldn't get it I was like what but this person could be the right person if I'm they would just him. change <laughs> Gentlemen, glad to have you back to another episode of Women Dating Over 30. And let me tell you guys, the situation is getting quite out of hand. It's getting quite desperate. Uh, so we have a lesson of coping 101 right here. Let's check that out again and let's commentate on it. What dating is, is trying to find compatibilities. And if you're not compatible, there is no, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that person. It also doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. You don't need to change yourself to try to make yourself more compatible with that person. And that person doesn't need to try to change themselves to make yourself more compatible with you. So this is the more sophisticated way to bring in the argument that don't worry, Prince Charming will just pop into your life. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to change yourself, improve yourself. You don't even have to get out of your house. Just live, breathe, exist, and Prince Charming, that perfect 10 out of 10 that ticks all the boxes, you know, all your standards, it'll just happen. It's the same argument, guys. It's just uh, a little bit of a nicer way to put it, but essentially, there's no logic in it. Uh, there's absolutely no reason behind it. So you're telling me that if you are 40 years old and you've had 30 failed relationships behind your back, uh, that means that, hey, you just haven't met him yet, you know? It's not that you should change something, like, God forbid, we're not here, guys. You know, women are not here to change things. They're, they're perfect, you know, they're just perfect. They don't have to move their little finger. Uh, if they haven't met someone yet, and they are 40 with tattoos, drinking boxed wine, and having four cats, it's just the the right one hasn't come yet. The, the universe didn't want us to have it yet. All right. You should just say, we don't have enough compatibilities and that's okay. And I wish you all the best, but this is not gonna be going the direction that we need to do. But like I spent so much time and energy in relationships. I was kind of a serial monogamist. I would go from like a two year relationship to a three. Serial monogamist guys, in other, in other words, uh, she didn't know how to keep a man. And so she went from one thing to another. Of course, she's not going to mention the in-between periods in which she probably had a lot of uh, casual hookups, you know. Uh, but guys, like, let me give you an example of this, right? Imagine uh, you, are, you have been kicked, you have been fired out of 27 jobs. And you go to an interview for your 28th job. And the interviewer asks you, why have you, you know, been fired 27 times? I, you know, that's a red flag for me. It just shows that maybe you don't know how to work properly. Maybe you are late every day. Maybe you don't respect your colleagues. And you tell him, oh, no, it's not me. It, it, I haven't done anything wrong. It's just we weren't compatible enough. And I'm still looking for a job that is compatible with me. It, it's just a, a big bag of bullcrap, guys. No one is buying it. Th this is ridiculous your relationship to a year and a half relationship and my mom would say to me danielle if you're always in a relationship with the wrong person when are you ever free to meet the right person and at the time i couldn't get it i was like what but this person could be the right person if I'm they would just him. change <laughs> enough and or if maybe i would just be a little different maybe this person could be the right person but like the majority of people are not going to be the right people and that's okay there's nothing wrong with them they're just not your person. Yeah, people lose sight of that all the time. Yeah. So date. Go out. Have 
have a meal, get a coffee, go for a walk, see a movie, do it two or three times, and then go, that was really nice, but this, there isn't enough here. There isn't the spark. There isn't the this. And so we're just going to part ways. I don't then have to hate you. The spark, guys. <laughs> and w women are not out there going to see movies and going to the park. Uh, most women, they hook up guys on the first date if they really like you. Uh, in the sec on the second date at most, like we're out here pretending that, you know, we're back in the, you know, in the 18th century where you had these dates uh, with no S3X, where you had marriages, uh, that were you know people were virgin. No one is buying it. Or say bad things about you, or any of that. I'm just going to part ways with you. Queen, what if you just decided to enjoy the hell out of this time that you're single? I know you're desperate to get to the good part and be in a relationship again, but obsessing about getting there has you missing out on the opportunity to experience a really great part that you could be having right now. Experiencing a really great, I cannot say it on YouTube, but a really great eggplant, you know. Uh, I wish I could be more, <laughs> you know, direct, but... Guys, I, it's this philosophy again of enjoy your time being single. You know, a lot of women, guys, they say this. Uh, they say, yeah, eventually I'm going to be in a relationship, but let's enjoy the moment. Let's have a fun right now. If you enjoy it so much, uh, why don't you stay there forever? Why don't you stay single forever if you enjoy that much? Right, guys? I mean, it's offensive to me. I, I get pissed. Uh, when women call this period of being single the best moment of their lives, you know, just all the freedom, jumping from one uh, guy to another, you know, just hot girl summers, etc. I mean, if you like it so much, why don't you stay in that period forever? Uh, because I'm not going to be a, a stupid simp who will commit to one of these women that value casual relationships more than a serious relationship right if a woman comes to me and tells me uh you know i've had 10 years of living my best life as they like to call it of just jumping from one guy to another having a lot of one night stands you know just being free being s3 actually liberated uh, but now that i'm 30 and i cannot do it anymore uh yeah why don't you commit and provide to me hell no you're not having your cake and eat it too. Choose. If it, if it really is the best moment of your life, stay there forever. Nobody wants you. Nobody will miss you. You can be assured. You know, if it's the best thing, just stay there. Don't bother men. Don't try to secure a provider when you're not, no longer able to, you know, uh, bring the chads in. And that's it. And everyone will be happy. Well, you will, and of course, because you will be miserable, you know, just wanting someone to provide for me. You will get tired of the nine to five. Uh, you know, you'll want some simp to pay for everything you need. Uh, but it's not happening, guys. Uh, we're not doing it. Uh, we're not on this earth to be a plan B, to be a second dish, you know. We're not here to be a side dish. We're not doing that. I know this because I did it. I wasted five precious years of my life after my divorce, hating on myself and being miserable and putting my life on hold because I decided to make my single status be like a death sentence. And I then attracted someone to me who was at a match for that low vibe energy and it was the worst relationship I've ever been in in my life. So the next time I was single, I did things completely different. I embraced my single status and I focused on cultivating a fulfilling, meaningful and happy life of my own. And I made it my mission to have an enjoyable life regardless of my relationship status. And ironically, the more I appreciated and valued my single life, the more I attracted great things into it, including my now fiance. And I yeah, that's the thing that I was going to mention, guys. I I was just waiting for her to, you know, spit it out. When they say they are single, they really aren't single, guys. It, just when every time a woman tells you that she is single, you can be 100% sure that she is not single. She's seeing men, multiple men, like women have the audacity to be having a roster of five guys and say they are single. It's, it's honestly uh, ludicrous. It's... <laughs> It's outrageous, guys. They're never single. Women are never single. You're not going to see um, 
a, a woman who is like celibate and not seeing any guys, just having male friends, no kisses, no hugs, no hookups, no dates, no tinders, whatever. You're not going to see that woman. You're not going to meet her. Okay, when women say that they are single, they really are uh, having like three to four uh, S3 actual encounters a week, uh, texting two hours a day on, on the dating apps, you know, just receiving so much attention and validation from their socials. Uh, and as you know, this woman, you can see the example right here. She was like, oh, I learned how to be single, how to be happily single. I embraced being single. And then she tells you, and that's how I met my fiance. It, it, that's how you met your fiance, being celibate and not seeing men, not dating men. That's how you met him. Or did you meet him uh, while well, you were on Tinder, uh, you know, on your 87th for the year date? And I'll leave you with this, Queen. Being single may not be your choice, but choosing to be happy while you're single most definitely can be. Beautiful advice, guys. Just beautiful advice. Thank you, Grandma, for this advice. Uh, I'll be sure not to implement it in my life because I actually think it's pretty destructive of a philosophy. Uh, but thank you anyway for your experience of a divorced single woman in her 50s. Just an example, guys. She leads by example. Another joy of dating after you've, you know, went through a breakup that you didn't want is now you're the wild card. You have become so guarded, your walls are up so high um, that you're going to have a, a list of things that people need to do in order to be part of your life. The okay, pause it right here. And how is that going to help you? Having so many walls, having so many emotional and psychological baggage, uh, you know, being hurt, probably you know, getting to nag someone all day is your hobby. Uh, how how does that help you in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I can tell you, guys most definitely hate, or they hate from the bottom of their hearts all the things that you've mentioned up until now. So I, I, I'm waiting on you to tell me how being a wild card is something good for your dating life. Checklist is, is, is impossible for anybody to meet, but you're going to want to cross people off your list right away. It's to protect yourself. So if you are surprised at now how difficult you are <laughs> to date, don't be. This is just you going in the opposite direction to kind of self-protect. So the pendulum swings both ways and it will come back to neutral if you find now you're the one um, with... Uh... Guys, again... I feel like in every video I have to mention how, how uh, passive these women think that things happen. You know, they never take action. They never self-meditate, uh, you know, reflect upon what they can do. Notice how it's always something passive, just like the woman from the intro. Uh, if, if I don't have, you know, um, a husband, well, it must mean we are not compatible. Something passive, right? Something out of my reach. This woman now. Uh, right here the pendulum swings guys the pendulum swings we don't have to do anything we don't have to touch anything we don't have to improve upon anything it's just a pendulum that swings automatically you know passively just wait is the advice here you know if if you are a horrible horrible dating option and nobody wants you because you are full of crap just wait for the pendulum guarded trust issues um abandonment issues really fearful of getting into that next relationship and you make it so this person can never get to where they need to be um notice that you're doing that for yourself and um give this person a fighting chance give them a fighting chance someone's gonna surprise you and um just keep plugging along just just keep plugging along you have to kiss a lot of frogs <laughs> oh no hopefully not too many but just get out there and start kissing frogs Guys, I feel like even if I tried, even if I sit down and think for 10 hours straight of a worse advice to give, I don't think I will be able to pull it off. I honestly think these women, guys, they are giving such a bad advice that not even the biggest mastermind on earth could create something worse. <laughs> it's literally the worst thing they can do for themselves. And she mentioned something along the lines of uh, the reason why you are so protective and whatever you know, the reason why you are so uh, hurt, 
the reason why you're such a hard option is because you are protective of yourself. Uh, you know, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for yourself. You, you are sabotaging yourself. You know, guys, every trauma, every bad situation that our brains try, uh, try to cope with, it doesn't really help us. You know, people who go through bad relationships and, and their brain figures a way to cope with what is happening, they don't go into another relationship being a, a better person, a better partner. No, they go into another relationship being a worse partner because now they have trust issues, you know, they communicate worse, um, they, they try to fix current problems the way they did in the previous toxic relationship. It's like, how delusional do you have to be uh, to say that all those walls you've raised in order to protect yourself are something good? It, it's not good. It's the opposite. People go to psychologists for this very same reason because they are trying to unlearn learned behaviors that are harming them. It's like, guys, for real, this woman is, you know, a lot of people say, whenever you hear advice from women, just do the complete opposite and you're going to be fine. So this is the advice here. A bartender at my very favorite bar asked me out on a date last night. And I said yes without thinking of the implications. And when I say favorite bar, I mean I walk into this bar, I get hugs. I get hugs from the owners, the bartenders, and the regulars. And that's why I, d I didn't think about the... I didn't think before I said yes, because he doesn't feel like my bartender, he feels like my friend. But he's my bartender. If this goes south, I can't go to my favorite bar anymore. Or at least that would, you know, it would make going to my favorite bar a little awkward, because you know, he's always there. He's going on vacation for a week, I'm going on vacation for a week. There's a chance this bullet gets dodged. Could I call it hanging out? Could we, like, go out and, like, hang out and it just, like, not be, like, a date? All right, guys, so two things. First off, uh, they have another example of how women have ex an extremely big amount of options. Whenever you hear a woman say, uh, where are all the good guys, you know, no, nobody is interested in me, I cannot find a partner, you know, I cannot find one, like they're looking for a unicorn. No, guys, they have hundreds of options, like the bartender is hitting on them, the, the mailman is hitting on them, their neighbor, their co-worker, like uh, three of the inner circle of friend groups are hitting on them. They have dozens of guys on their dms it's like women have so many options guys don't let them fool you uh, the second thing she mentioned it will be awkward to go to that bar you know if i have a failed relationship there nowadays guys nowadays in these times yeah you must really worry when you're dating a woman uh that just going for a walk uh can result in you seeing six different people that have been with that woman it's so cringe it's so disgusting like women who have triple digit body counts you can't literally go anywhere with them uh without them seeing a quote-unquote old friend and uh, he's just a friend it's so embarrassing guys like <laughs> the women like this who are community property not not like this one in particular i'm, I'm talking in general uh and another reason why you should not date women with big body uh, body counts it's so embarrassing that a lot of people know your woman, your supposed girlfriend, and a lot of people know her. A lot of people have been with her. Uh, you have absolutely no intimacy with her. You know, it's like everyone's been with her. She's community property at this point. Uh, and I don't say that to be rude or mean or anything, but what I'm trying to say is that as a woman, when you choose to be for the streets, you never leave the streets. Once you've had a certain experience of being with too many men, you can never become a wife, you know, wife material. So following on from my last post about uh, the dating apps, so many people were feeling the same as me, which sucks. I'm sorry to hear. But let's give each other some advice. What do you hate most? Like what is the one thing that is the biggest turn off? that happens in conversations or matches or whatever it is that you just go, ugh, 
and say no to that person or give up on the apps? Like, what is the number one thing? I'll go first. I hate it when you're talking to someone and they're really nice on like whatever app you're on and then you will switch out to like say Snapchat or something like that and the first thing you get is a pic or video. I don't want to see that. Like I get it. You've got one. You like it. That's cool. Like get to know me first <laughs> before you do that. It just, it just seems like if we we're at a cafe having a date, that's essentially like flopping, flopping yourself out there. And, uh, that would be a huge red flag. So to me, that's a big turn off. What, what's yours? Guys, uh, to be honest, I've never understood that, you know, men doing that to be completely honest, you know, I don't understand guys who just send random deep pics to women. I think I've never heard of a man who has done that and has like, I don't know, hooked up with them later. It's not like women like this, you know, guys. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it, it brings a cynical smile to my face because uh, women are getting the treatment that they've been offering to guys for many years. You know, uh, women, the vast majority of women they don't they don't take guys seriously when the guys are interested in them uh they friends on them they don't speak to them they you know turn their backs on them they don't care they go for the bad boys they go for the unavailable men uh and you know later uh when <laughs> later when they receive this sort of treatment of a guy not giving two flips about them not caring at all uh it pisses them off so it's quite a funny uh situation right there but guys, what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to see you next time. Have a good one.